to them? Well, uh, Rob, you you just need to step back maybe a Uh year or two if you remember Iran's nuclear enrichment program. Exactly. And they had the centrifuges for uh, enriching uranium, Mm -hmm. and they spun out of control and were damaged. And it's pretty widely known now that the CIA was behind that. And so the CIA, in addition to what they do from a spook standpoint, uh, you know, uh, they also do covert operations. And they have a very big uh, cyber, you know, uh, activity within the CIA. Yeah, you know, I also know that the NSA, you know, monitors... Uh, monitors computer traffic within the United States and computer traffic coming into the United States. I know that CSIS and other intelligence agencies around the world also do this uh, because... Well, the NSA does it worldwide, and they've developed quite a elaborate, sophisticated mm-hmm. uh, system of electronic intelligence gathering. Uh, it's a very, very sophisticated system at the you know, NSA, National Security Agency, there. Um, where did your interest come in uh, from uh, in your book, uh, the uh, uh, the cyber attack aspect? Uh, are you a techie? Well, I, I spent 20 years of my life in uh starting and running the largest venture capital firm wow. in Southern California. So, so we backed over 100 companies, and a lot of them were in the high-tech area, and computer security mm-hmm. was one of the uh, areas that we knew. How secure are the are the computers that that hold our credit cards, hold our financial information, hold the secrets to the security of the nations? Well, in the banking system, it's uh, it is vulnerable. They the banks have been pretty sophisticated in um, in developing firewalls, but they are the technology of mm-hmm. the hackers is really accelerating, and um, and they're not uh, invulnerable. The, the place you know, in my uh, in my novel it, it features an attack on the U.S. Treasury auction, so I really had to look in depth into what kind of security exists within the Treasury auction system, and you know it was comforting to know that it's very secure. The firewalls there are very very sophisticated. They have a uh, system called the socket layer system that defends it. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think that any foreign nation or other could penetrate it at this point. Of course, writing a novel, I can help them penetrate it. (laughs) Well, sure. Uh, You you know, there are movies that I've watched on television where these these, uh, computer hackers actually divert money from different corporations, different banks, and send them, send them millions of dollars electronically to banks in the Turks and the Caicos. Uh, does this happen in real life, or is this strictly fiction? Uh, I think that's mostly fiction at this point, but it is something to worry about because mm. they're getting better and better at this. Tell me, tell me about your book, about the provocator. Okay. Uh, the provocateur really begins with a interesting protagonist, uh, a young woman named Nadia, mm-hmm. who was born out of wedlock in an industrial city in Russia, uh, lived her whole early life in an orphanage. Uh, so she had a very, very tough early life. But Mother Nature had smiled on her, and she was mentally gifted. She's smarter than any man she ever comes in contact with. And uh, she comes to America through a mail-order bride program, gets hooked up with a uh, ex-CIA lady named Olga, 
And then uh, we see her in encounters with uh, a number of alpha males. So where it, the plot thickens, and in the main event, mm -hmm. she goes up against a Russian oligarch wow. named Vladimir Rusov. And he has a scheme for hacking into the treasury auction and stealing a billion dollars. So her job is to try and neutralize that threat. How close to reality is your book? And where did you get the information to research such an elaborate um, cyber attack? Well, I, I knew a lot about the technology and anyway, but mm -hmm. uh, it took some pretty deep research to find out how the Treasury auction is defended and how the the firewalls operate and and the like. So um, it 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 uh, took some research to find that out. You know, uh, one of the and I hope it, I hope it's not a handbook for tri for terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just going to say that because one of the reviews that I read about the provocateur is that it includes a chillingly realistic cyber attack on the U.S. Treasury. Yes. Wow. It, this is uh, you know it, it's so funny because what is fiction one day is reality the next in this world of ours. Here you were. Uh, how long did how long did it take you to write your book? Um, I'm a pretty fast writer. It I, I'm I have a full time job just running this hedge fund, mm -hmm. but I wrote it in about eight weeks part time. Wow. So here here you are writing this book that is fiction uh, to this point, and then the next thing you know, the news breaks that the Chinese are actually doing what is in your book. You must be part psychic. Yeah, well, it, it, it is a concern that's been lurking in my mind for some time. All right, you and I have to... And you know, these cyber attacks, there's quite a few different kinds of intruders. All right, you and I now, have to take our commercial... Are... Just a sec, uh, Charles, you and I have to take our okay. commercial break sure. with the news at the bottom okay. of the hour. Sure when enough. we come back, let's talk about the different types of cyber attacks. Okay. Hmm, cyber attacks, the topic this hour. The question to you, the members of the Exxon, is the America is America prepared for a massive cyber attack? God, I hope so. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with my guest, Charles D. Martin. He's the author of Provocateur, as they say it in Quebec. The website, www.provocateurbook.com. And uh, Charles Martin and I will return on the other side of this commercial break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. My name is Rob McConnell, and I would like to tell you about a very special lady that I have the pleasure of knowing, and that's Miss Sylvia Anthony. Sylvia Anthony believes the golden years are a time to gear up and get busy, not relax and take it easy. She has faced many hardships in her 84 years, but they have made her stronger and more determined. As founder and president of Sylvia's Haven, a shelter for women and their children near Boston, Sylvia has helped transform over 1,086 lives in the past 27 years, not only with housing, but also providing direction as to where they can go to develop the earning skills they want and need to live free from difficult domestic situations. Sylvia's Haven is everything to Sylvia Anthony, even calling it her magnificent obsession. Women who qualify for the program at Sylvia's Haven receive assistance via guidance counselors to find the appropriate job opportunity. Women and their children may remain at the housing for up to two years. At the end of this time, or sooner, a woman who is successfully employed and has an apartment or home may leave Sylvia's Haven to begin a new and independent life. Now this is where you come in to help make Sylvia's dream into a reality. 
Sylvia's dream is to have a Sylvia's Haven in every state to help as many women and their children as she can and to help this dream come true. A crowdfunding site has been established which can be accessed at www.sylviasdream.org. Now that's www.sylviasdream.org. With your financial help and support, Sylvia Anthony will continue to help those in their time of need, not only in the Boston area, but with her dream of having a Sylvia's Haven in every state of the United States. Your help is needed to make Sylvia's dream come true. Please visit and give at www.sylviasdream.org. Once again, www.sylviasdream.org. And remember, the only difference between a dream and reality is just doing it. We need your help to make Sylvia's dream come true. Visit www.sylviasdream.org. Once again, www.sylviasdream.org. For the Exxon Radio TV show and the X Chronicles newspaper, I am Rob McConnell. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. You're listening to the X-Zone Radio Show, live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network, X-Zone Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. Our toll-free telephone number worldwide is 1-800-610-7035. Our email address, xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, Exxon Radio TV at Hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxoneradiotv.com. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, my guest this hour is Charles Martin. We're talking about cyber attack, and the question this hour, Exo um, Nation, is: Is America prepared for a massive cyber attack? Charles Martin is the author of Provocateur, and his website is www.provocateurbook.com. Uh, first of all, Charles, thanks very much for joining us. And before we went to the commercial break uh, with the news, uh, we were we were just starting to talk about the different types of cyber attacks. And I was wondering if you could uh, take us through that. Uh, yes, and just just uh, one note on the website. It's provocateurbook.com. There is a website, provocateur.com, which is a ladies' lingerie <laughs> site. So oh. we... <laughs> You need to add a book on the end I'm of I'm sorry about that. Ah, geez, how did I know okay. that? I don't know. Back to our subject here. Uh, I kind of put the you know cyber insurgents mm-hmm. into kind of four categories. There's certainly the foreign government uh, sponsored insur- insurgents, and it's not just China, but Iran is very very active in this area. Russia is uh, Eastern Europe. There's a lot of activity. So it's a range of of those. Um, Then there is the commercial espionage category that is designed to steal valuable corporate uh, intellectual property or other secrets. Uh, A third category is the terrorists themselves. Uh, they are coming up the learning curve and becoming increasingly a worrisome uh, group of uh, 
of cyber uh, attackers, mm -hmm. you know, their goal would be to disrupt our you know,